Thousands of spectators from across the country made their way to sail Boston this weekend to see more than 50 very tall ships sail into the harbor, the largest fleet in more than 15 years. The Eagle was the first sailboat to cut through the fog, which delayed the festivities by nearly two hours on Saturday morning. The working Coast Guard ship is one of the year's biggest draws, a German cutter taken by the U.S. after World War II. Three-way engagers, head one third! Third one! It really feels like I'm a part of history and it feels like I've been transported back in time. The Eagle is the largest active sailboat in the entire military and it's docked at the Charlestown Navy Yard until the entire fleet ships off on Thursday. Of course, life on the high seas has come a long way since the days of said tall ships. At the turn of the century, ocean liners were the way to travel, the height of taste, style and opulence. And right now, the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem is featuring a retrospective on these floating palaces of the past. Arts editor Jared Bowen has more. You've left your home, but you're not at your destination yet. You're in a fantasy world. And so the company's built upon that sense of fantasy dramatically. It's a fantasy revived at the Peabody Essex Museum. This was set up for a lifestyle that people knew how to live. Teeming with London's Victoria and Albert Museum, Peabody Essex curator Dan Finnamore presents an exquisitely detailed look at the age of ocean liners, which by the early 20th century had become beacons of international style. They communicated aesthetics, they communicated culture and excitement. When an ocean liner came into port, it was carrying all sorts of ideas from the other side of the Atlantic Ocean or from farther afield even. Thousands lined ports just to see the liners and all of their might and majesty. On board, the ships became incubators of modernity, with dining rooms and staterooms that heralded new design. And Dan, this face makes me regret that I wasn't born about 100 years earlier. This is beautiful. This is the very high style. Those arts referencing all sorts of European majestic spaces, castles and palaces and whatnot. And what do we see here? Well, this is the central staircase element uh, for the steamship Olympic from the 19-teens, and this was the sister ship to Titanic. And this would be also familiar to film fans? Well, it was the central staircase element in the film Titanic, which people see over and over again. The show also features chilling Titanic remnants, including this deck chair, pulled from the icy Atlantic waters, and this panel. A lot of people don't know that it exists, and this is the single largest piece of carved decorative interior from the Titanic that survives today. The ocean liners were like layer cakes of classes, the frosting given over to the well-heeled who embodied glamour. If you're traveling to Europe uh, and you are buying couture clothes, then where better to actually wear them for the first time than on your trip home? After World War II, ocean liners began to permanently disappear into the horizon as more and more passengers took to the air. What happened at the end of the day to all of these liners? Some of them just sort of went on as lesser vessels and were sold to different companies and the great works and the design inside sort of faded into the background and things migrated off or maybe wore out and were broken. And then some of them were broken up intentionally. Making this show the first of new lines to the old liners. Jared Bowen, WGBH News. You can catch Ocean Liners, Glamour, Speed and Style at the Peabody Essex Museum through October 9th. And you can find more information at PEM.org.